Alright, class, I'm going to go through the work example 2 on page 175 of your textbook. Okay, 175 of your textbook. Can we take a look at the question? A cuboid with dimensions 9 cm by 7 cm by h cm has a volume of 378 cm cube. Calculate the height h of the cuboid. Calculate the height h of the cuboid. Now, we will have 9 times 7 times height, length times breadth times height equals to 378. Height will be 378 divided by 9 divided by 7. I will get 6 and therefore the height will be a 6 cm. Okay, that's how we do our part 1. Now for part 2, if the cuboid is melted to form a cube of length L cm, find the length of L, find the value of L. Now, we know that for a cube, is the three lengths are the same. So it's L times L times L, which will give me L cube, which will be 378. So when I take cube root, I will have this. Now be careful, the working must be to five figure truncate, and the final answer will be to three figure round off, significant figure. Okay, now next, part three. If the cuboid is melted to form cubes of length 3 cm, how many cubes can be obtained? Now, as we can see, volume of one cube will be 3 times 3 times 3, okay, which will give me 27 cm cube. So, the number of cubes will be 378 divided by 27. I will get 14 cubes in total. Alright, 14 cubes in total. Now, the difficult part is actually part 4. Let us take a look at part 4. Li Ting said if the cuboid is cut to form cubes of length 3 cm, the maximum number of cubes that can be obtained will be the same as the part as that found in part 3. That means 14. Is Li Ting correct? Explain your answer. Okay, is Li Ting correct? Explain your answer. Now I want you to look at the cuboid. Okay, I want you to look at the cuboid. Now, all of you look here. If I have 9, I will have 3 times of 3. 3, 3, 3. So, 3 times of 3. 7, I can only have 2 times of 3 plus 1. There's a 1 remainder here. And for the height, we have found in part 1 that is 6. So, I have 2. Okay, 2 of 3. That means... For 9 cm, I can have 3 of such cubes. 7, I will have 2 times. This is not counted. And for 6, I will have 2. So the maximum number of cubes that can be formed is actually 3 times 2 times 2, which is 12. Now, 12 is not 14. Therefore, Li Ting is not correct. Okay, so this explains work example 2 on page 175 okay next we move on to example 3 of the textbook okay that is your page 176 can all of you look at page 176 question number example 3 for example 3 okay now we have a cuboid okay this is example 3 we have a cuboid, all right? It says that calculate the volume of wood used in making an open rectangular box, 2 cm thick, given that its internal dimensions are 54 cm by 46 cm by 18 cm. Now, the internal, that means here, okay? 54, 46, 18. Now, there's a 2 cm gap here, but mind you, the top, the 2 cm is only below. Okay, in order to find the volume of wood use, I must take the external volume minus the internal volume. Okay, now what will be the external volume? Okay, the big box will be 54 plus 2 plus 2. So I'll have this, 58. This one will be 46 plus 2 plus 2. Plus 2 plus 2, I'll have 50. And this one is only 18 plus 2 because there's only thickness here, there's no thickness on top. So it's 18 plus 2, that's 20. 
Now the internal dimension will be 54 times 46 times 18. So when I take the external volume minus the internal volume, I will get this volume of wood that is used in making that rectangular box. Okay? Now, following which, I'll be going on to example 4, which is the surface area of cuboid. A cuboid is 6 cm long, 4 cm wide, and 3 cm high. Calculate its volume. This is length times breadth times height. I will get a 72 cm cube. 72 cm cube. And total surface area. Now, the top and the bottom is the same. So 6 times 4 times 2. Plus this side, okay, 4 times 3 times 2 because the other side is still the same. And the front, 6 times 3 times 2 because the back is also the same. Therefore, I will have a 108 cm squared. Okay, 108 cm squared. So that will complete your example 4 of your textbook. Okay, now, following which, I'll be going on to example 5. Okay, example 5 of your textbook. Alright, let's all look at example 5, which is being found on page 182. Alright, example 5, which is being found on page 182. Alright, let us take a look over here. Now, this is a prism with a parallelogram base. Parallelogram base. Now, we know that for a parallelogram, the area is base times height. So, for a volume of a prism, it's base area times height. So, 2 times 1 will give me the base area and, and times the height here, 6. So, it will give me a 12 meter cube. 12 meter cube. Okay? Now, please refer to page 183, practice now 6. Okay? I've already drawn the figure for you. Alright? Please take a look at the figure and also how did I solve or find the various necessary quantities. Okay? First of all, they say calculate its volume and the total surface area of the prism. Now, volume, as we know, is base area times height. Now, this base area is made up of a rectangle, 6, 5, and a triangle, 3, 4. So, base area will be rectangle plus triangle. Half times 4 times 3, I'll get 36 cm squared. So, for volume, it's base area times height. So, I'll take 36 times the height, which is 4.5. Therefore, I will get a 162 cm squared. Sorry, cm cube. Okay? Now, for the total surface area, do not forget that I say it's perimeter of base times height plus 2 base area. Perimeter of base will be 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6. That means I take all the sides here. Okay? Repeat. 5 plus 6. Sorry, I go this way, ah. Huh? 5 plus 6 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6. That will be the parameter of the base times the height, which is 4.5. That will take care of all the lateral faces of the prism. Okay? And then I plus 2 times the base area, which means I plus 2 times 36. Okay? Plus 2 times 36. And therefore, I will get a 180 cm squared. So that will complete your practice now 6. That is on page 183. Okay? Now, following which, I'm going on to example 7. Can all of you look at example 7? Work example 7 that is found on your page 186. Now, this figure shows you a cylinder. Work example 7. This figure shows you a cylinder. Now, the question say, the diameter of the base of a cylinder is 14 cm and its height is half of its base radius. Calculate the volume of the cylinder. Now, you must take note, this is the diameter, 14. Therefore, the radius will be 7. And since the height is half of the radius, it will be half times 7, that is 3.5 cm. Okay, 
that means this cylinder has got radius 7 cm and the height 3.5 cm. So in order to get the volume, I have pi r square h, I substitute in the various numbers, okay, and I will get the answer as 539 cm cube. Okay, don't forget working, if it's a big number, we try to give it to three decimal places, and then after that, we round off to three significant figures. Okay, that will complete your work example seven. Okay, now next I'm going on to a more difficult question and I hope that all of you can listen carefully. Alright, let's look at work example eight. I'm going to explain this so that you can understand what the textbook is talking about. Okay, so can we take a look at this particular question? A pipe of radius 2.8 cm discharges water at a rate of 3 meter per second. That means water is flowing at 3 meter per second. Calculate the volume of water discharged per minute, giving your answer in liters. Now, I want to take note. 3 meter per second means 300 centimeter per second. Now, that means in one second, the volume of water will be pi r squared times the length, the height, which is 300. Okay, so this is the volume of water discharge per second. Pi r squared h, which is 300 cm, to be taken as the height. Okay, now I will get this answer. Now we know that in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So the volume of water must be this amount times 60. Okay, so I will get this amount of water. Alright, now let me explain again what does it mean. That means if I draw it this way, this will be a 2.8 cm pipe and the height is actually 300 cm for a one second uh, discharge. Therefore, the cylinder will be a 300 cm cylinder. So therefore, the amount of water per second is pi r square h, which is 300. Okay, all of us have to get this clear because if not, we are unable to solve the problems that follow in the examples or in the questions that is given in the exercises. Okay, now, and the question requested that the answer to be given in liters, and we know that 1000 cm cube is 1 liter, therefore, we will convert this into liters, and the final answer must be given to 3 significant figures, which is a 443 liters. Okay, so this is the solution to work example 8 on page 187. Alright, next, I'm moving on to another example that is on practice now 9, that is found on page 189. Can all of you look at this particular question? Practice now 9, which is found on page 189. Alright? Now, this is an interesting question and I am going to do only question number 2. Okay, question number 2. Now, let's look at the question now. The figure shows a section of a steel pipe of length 12 cm. The internal and external radii of the pipe are 2.1 cm and 2.5 cm respectively. Show that the area of the cross section of the pipe is 1.84 pi cm squared. Now, the cross section is actually this ring here. That means it's the big circle minus the small circle. The one that I have shaded. Okay, so it's pi r square, the big circle, minus pi r square, the small circle. Because the question requires us to leave it in pi, we do not key in any value for pi, but we leave it in terms of pi. That means you leave pi alone and write the answer. And we have shown that it is 1.84 pi cm squared. Now, next, find the internal curved surface area of the pipe. Internal means this small one. Internal curved surface area is 2 pi rh. So we substitute in, we'll be able to get the answer. Okay? Now, final part. 
Hence, find the total surface area of the pipe. Now, I want all of you to make sure you know that the total surface area of the pipe is the internal curve surface plus the external curve surface plus these two rings here on top and below. Okay? So, the total surface area will be internal curve surface plus external curve surface plus two times the area of the cross section, which is the two rings. So, I will have this, which I already found in part two. Now, don't forget to use the one that has got more significant figures, plus 2 pi r h, plus 2 times the base area, that means the rings, 2 times this. So, this time round, we key in the value for pi, and we'll give the answer as 358 cm squared. Okay, so internal curve surface plus external curve surface plus the two rings will give us the total surface area of the pipe. Alright, so this will conclude practice now 9, question number 2. Okay, next, we will move on to practice now 10, question 1 and question 2. These are all called composite figures because they are made up of two or more figures combined together for us to find the volume and the surface area. So let us look at question 1 of practice now 10 on page 192. Now, they give you the figure and they explain to you they want us to find the volume and the total surface area of the container. Now, volume, as you can see, this is the base area. This will be the height. The base area is made up of a square here. So, not square, sorry, a rectangle plus a quadrant. Quadrant means one quarter of a circle. Now, the radius of the circle is 14. So, pi r square will be the area of the circle. One quarter of it will be the quadrant. So, this will give me the base area of the prism. Alright, and that times height, 20, which will give me the volume of the prism. Volume of prism is base area times height, so I find the base area and multiply by the height, I will get the answer. And don't forget, the answer must be given to three significant figure, so it will be this particular answer. Okay, now about the total surface area, as I've mentioned, we have to get parameter of base times height plus two base area. Now, this two base area is not a concern because we already found it out in the first part. So, two times base area, I use this one. Okay, I'm sorry, I use this one. 279.938 here. Now, parameter of base will be, all of you look, the base is this. Alright, I'm going to show you how I find a parameter of the base. Alright, let us take a look now. Now, can you see that it is 9 plus 14? 9, sorry, I start from here. Eh? Okay, all over again. 9 plus 14 plus 9 plus 14 plus 1 quarter of the circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r. So I one quarter of it, I will get the quadrant. That means one quarter of the circumference. Okay, repeat. 9 plus 14 plus 9 plus 14 plus this curve. One quarter of the circumference. This will give me the parameter of base. Times height plus two base area. I will get this answer. And don't forget to give the final answer to three significant figures. Okay? Likewise, for question two, Okay, for question two, it's slightly different. Alright, now this figure is made up of a rectangle, then with a semicircle chopped off. Okay, with a semicircle chopped off. So the question also asks for volume and total surface area. Now, this area is the rectangle minus the semicircle. So it's the rectangle. 8 times 6 minus half pi r square, which will be the area of the semicircle. Don't forget, the diameter is 6, therefore the radius is 3. Okay, so I get this base area, and then I times the height, which is 12. I will get the answer as 406 cm cube. 
Now then we want to find the total surface area, which will be the parameter of base times height plus two base area. Again, I take two base area here. Okay, and parameter of base will be all of you look up here. Eight plus six plus eight. Then I plus the semicircle. This semicircle is circumference times half because it's a semicircle, so it's half of the circle. So it's circumference times half. Okay, so that's how we get the parameter of the base. Okay, and then I times the height, which is 12. I will get the answer as a 445 cm squared. Okay, so this will conclude practice now 10. Question 1 and question 2 of your textbook on page 192.